ocean halibut. So it's been a little bit of a tough year for me for ocean halibut. I haven't got one yet. And now it's June ready, or almost June. And I don't think it's just me. I think, uh, I think it's been a tough year for a lot of people. I actually heard that the water in the bay, the ocean out here in the Bay Area is colder than it normally is at this time of year. So that would make sense. The halibut bite hasn't turned on yet. It's probably because of that, that ocean is still pretty cold. So halibut in the Bay Area, especially on the ocean side of things, when the water is cold, I don't know what happens to these fish. They either go deep or I, I think what happens is they just shut down. They, they stay, maybe they go a little deeper, but they're still there and they're just kind of in hibernation mode is what I like to call it. They don't really do much. I feel like they just sit on the floor and just close their eyes and take a nap for a couple of months. And then when the water warms up, then they wake up again and then they start feeding again. But I don't think that's really happened yet. Um, so I think that's why it's been a little bit of a tough year so far for me. But I'm hoping to change that today. And what I got today, I brought a secret weapon. And the secret weapon is some bait that I caught actually two days ago out in the kayak. Today, I can't get my transducer or my fish finder to work. So it's not necessarily a huge problem when it comes to halibut fishing because usually you can't really mark halibut. They're just sitting on the bottom. But it is a problem for catching bait. I can't mark the bait like I normally would. And so I'm gonna have to kind of go blind. We'll see how it goes. All right, we're flying blind. See how this goes. Here we go. There we go. Stay on there. Come on. Ooh, two of them. Even better. Those are a good size, though. fishing for these squid and obviously if they're out here commercially fishing then there's gonna be squid around so I've been I kind of looked on my own for a little bit didn't find anything so I kind of pulled up I mean you don't want to crowd these boats they're way bigger than me I'm gonna lose that battle but uh, coming up in this same area and that's where I've been able to get a few of these squid here plugging away and if you never seen these boats in action they're pretty cool to see they have like a little boat well, they have the big the big you know main boat and then they have a little boat that's like kind of attached to the back and when they drop the net they release that small boat and they kind of drive the, the main boat around in a circle to form that big you know net to form that big circle and then obviously that net kind of drops down eventually they close up the bottom scoop it all up and they got you know their payday so pretty cool thing to see these guys are in action right now, just, just to my uh, right here. You can see these guys in action here. So you can see that big boat right there. He's got the, you know, all of the nets kind of unloading from the back of his boat. And there's a smaller boat over to the left here that's holding the other end of the net. And so that big boat right there is going to drive in a circle. So it gets all the way around back to that small boat. And then you know, that net drops down. We're in pretty deep water here. I think we're in 180 feet, something like that. Anyways, that net drops down. They close up the bottom and then scoop up their bounty. So that day that I caught the live squid, I actually tried it for a little while and didn't catch anything. I, I, caught, I think I caught one little baby lingcod. No halibut. You know, that was it. So um, put it in the fridge and then I brought it back today. Although it's not live anymore, it is fresh dead squid, which is much, much better than the frozen squid that you could buy in the store. So I'm hoping that little advantage that I have today is gonna separate me, you know, from the other boats and maybe, maybe entice a halibut to bite one of my lines. I'm gonna try to get out to about 45 feet of water and I got a line that I wanna run kind of out this way across and then back and see if I can find any fish, so. All right, so get secret weapon time. Ooh. This is like halibut gold right here. 
First one going on. Oh, that thing looks good. That looks good. I'm feeling good today. All right, got that one on the bottom. So I don't know if you guys can see it. The fresh squid has like a shine almost to it that you don't, when you pull it out of the freezer, it doesn't have that anymore. So I feel like that's the little slight advantage that you get with the fresh squid. Maybe the halibut can find it a little bit easier. I don't know. I think the smell is probably better too. Probably a better scent trail than the frozen stuff. I probably lost a little bit of that scent, but all I know is these guys are looking good. Looking like they're gonna get eaten. All right, come on halibut. Oh my god, that's something big. What is this? It's big, it's big. That was, I went to go check my other line. Oh, I think there's a halibut. I think there's a halibut. Oh my god, I went to go, I was gonna go check this line and then I didn't even see the bite at all. I just, I just heard the drag peeling. Giving me some good head shakes here. I think I'm gonna crank this one up because I don't want to get tangled. Yeah, big head shakes, big head shakes. It's busy a halibut. I can almost guarantee that. It's funny, I, I was going right over this spot that I have marked from, I don't even know, it's just a mark. I don't know what it was from. But I just thought, hey, you know what? Let's go check out this spot. Whatever it was before, I marked it for some reason. Usually, if it's something good, I'll put a name on it. You know, like, oh, I caught a halibut here or something. But this one didn't have any name or anything, so I wasn't really sure what the deal was with this one. Oh my God, look at those head shakes. The secret weapon. Oh my God, huge head shakes. Dude, this is a this is a good fish. Good fish. Get the gaff ready. You can see him on the fish finder. He looks like a good one. Oh, I don't like those head shakes. at him. First look at him. Oh yeah. Oh my god. It's a big halibut. Big halibut. Hopefully he's tired now. I mean, uh, he went for a good run there at the beginning. Okay. Try to stick him right, right in the belly. Got him! Oh yeah! That's the one we were looking for right there. First priority is to get him on the stringer. There are absolutely no boats around me. Oh man, well you guys probably haven't seen it on the channel, but I've been out here at least a few times already looking for my first ocean halibut. But we got him now. Good size howler right there, super thick. That's definitely my biggest of the year. I want to say he's probably like 30, 33 inches, something like that. That's a good one though. I want to say it's probably, yeah, 32, 33. Let's see, let's come and measure. Get the official measurement. 
definitely keeper. So in California, the minimum size for halibut is 22 inches. Uh, this one's way over that, but anyways, if you're looking to keep some halibut, that's the minimum size you gotta hit if you wanna keep one. Here, this one measures in at, yeah, 33. I think I said 33 first, right on the dot. Good to know my measuring skills are still there. Been drifting around for about an hour or so. I wasn't sure I was gonna get one. I didn't have any, really no action yet, but this one saved the day right there. So anyways, still very early in the day. Let's get our line back down and see if we can get another one. So if you've been following the channel, me and, oh really any halibut fishing is really looking for that 40, I feel like. But me and Taku have really been making an effort, Outdoor Chef Life. We really want to get a 40 this year. So this was not quite there. I mean, he's definitely a good fish. I'd say it's, it's pretty thick. I want to say this is like 15 pounds or so, um, but not quite 40 inches, 33. Still about seven inches short, which is actually feels like a lot. But anyways, that's the goal for this year is a 40 inch halibut at some point. I just saw a picture the other day of a 43 incher that was caught out here in the ocean. We're gonna circle back around because halibut you know, they're not schooling fish like a, a salmon or, you know, striped bass or something like that, but they will sit in groups. So where that one was sitting, it's very possible that there's another one. So maybe this one will be a little bit bigger. So this is actually in this pretty close to where we caught the halibut. So uh, my guess is there's a little bit of a, a little reef there. And a lot of times those halibut will hang tight to the reef, even though they're not right on the rocks like these guys are. Uh, they'll get pretty close to the reef as well because there's a, that's a good source of, of, uh, of food. A lot of little bait fish and stuff hang out by the reefs. But anyways, now we're looking for Get Jack down and see if we can find another halibut. Another ling. There must be a little reef there. This is like 30 seconds after the last ling. Now, now what we're looking for. I think I just snagged something off the bottom. Look at that. What is that? It's like a sea anemone. Catch and release. Coming up. Nope, the wing. Alright, third little ling. Like I said, these aren't what we're looking for. We're just bycatch. Water to the gills. There he goes. That's a fish. Yep, ling. Lingy, lingy. Seems like there's a good population of undersized ling here, which is not bad. I think that's good for the future of the population because we haven't caught a single one that was of keeper size. And this is now my fourth undersized fish. All right, another little ling, quick release. Shaker, shaker halibut. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, well shaker, you don't catch too many shakers out in the open ocean, but that's a shaker right there, probably about 20 inches or so.
or something. Something. There's nothing. <laughs> got him. I got him. Whatever it is. Oh, that's a halibut. That's a halibut. That is a halibut. 100%. That is 100% a halibut. You can tell with those head shakes. No other fish out here has that. Oh man. Oh. Oh. This might be a little bit bigger one. This might be a little bit bigger one. this fish on this side. It was the slightest bite too. I just saw a little little tick. I know. And then when I picked up the rod I did feel the weight. It wasn't like a big thumping run like the last one where we were just stripping line right away. This one was a little bit more subtle. Yeah, I think it's a little bit smaller actually than the first one, but it's still a good, good fish for sure. Gaffing the fish, we want to try and gaff them in the, on the belly side, right behind the head. It's like a sweet spot right there where if you get them there, they don't move just like that. So you can see, I got the gaff right behind the head on the belly side. Oh, it's kind of right in the middle actually, but I came in from the the belly side of the fish, which is this side. And usually when you get them, like in this little sweet spot right here. Usually when you gaff them like this, they hardly move. If you get them on the top, in the back, you know, anywhere else, they'll start flopping insane sometimes, but usually, usually this spot's a good one. But anyways, let's get them on the, on the stringer here. All right, we'll get a measure on this one. I think he's a little bit smaller. I want to say he's like 28-ish, something like that. Yeah, a little bit less. 27, 26, 27. That is a nice eating fish though. So, especially a halibut. I mean, they're all good eating fish, especially out in the ocean, the open ocean. I like these a little bit better than the bay. I mean, the bay ones are good too, but the open ocean fish, I feel like are a little bit cleaner. And um, yeah, when you flame up, it just, I don't know. It might be mental just in my mind, but I feel like they look and taste a little bit cleaner out here on the ocean side of things. But anyways, nice little fish there. 26, 27 incher. Nice solid keeper. And that's number two. All right, it's my last squid. Look at the colors on that fish. So, definitely when you catch them out in the ocean, you know, generally speaking, they have more of this like pattern where it's like light brown with all these like spots on it and white spots. And when you catch them in the bay, more often they have like a just straight dark brown pattern. And I think that's because they're trying to blend in with the bottom, you know, ocean floor. So in the bay, it's really muddy and silty. It's probably mostly just brown so that's why they're just a straight brown color and then out here in the in the open ocean there's all kinds of stuff out there there's little pebbles down there who knows what's down there but I think that's why they have more of this pattern uh, when you catch them out here in the ocean because there's just more stuff in there that they're trying to blend in with so anyways it's always cool to catch them out here in the ocean because they they look a little bit cooler in my opinion not only the taste but just the look is a little bit cooler is the fifth shaker wing I've caught today. 
not complaining because I wasn't targeting them, but it's just amazing how many small ones there are here. There he goes. Quick release. All right, that was the last squid. All right, well, I really only was planning to fish a half day today. I was planning to go in by noon, but um, I caught that first one and then caught the second one right, right at noon as I was about to head in. And then I had dreams of a halibut limit. Just wasn't meant to be though, but definitely not complaining. It was an awesome day out here. Finally got my first ocean halibut of 2022. And on top of that, got my second one right after that. So definitely not complaining. It was an awesome day out here. The weather cooperated nicely. I mean, the sun never came out, but the wind also never came out. I'm assuming it's gonna pick up here, yeah, probably in the next hour or two, but we're gonna head in and beat the wind and beat the traffic home, so. Anyways, it's been a fun day. Busted out the secret weapon, and actually, I'm really excited. Well, this video is exciting, but I'm also really excited for the next video that I'm gonna bring to you guys. And I won't give away all the details from the next video. You're gonna have to wait for that. But I will say, I'll give you a little hint. These two fish that you saw in this video, one of you guys could be taking home, or multiple of you guys could be taking home parts of these fish to cook at your home for dinner. So I'll leave it at that. Let you guys guess and see what's coming up next. But until then, thank you guys for watching. Appreciate all the support. And we'll see you guys on the next video.